Hi, hope you had a great weekend. Well, uh, today I want to talk about the brain. When we talk about the human body today and we look at the way medicine is moving, nutrition and all of these things, it doesn't just have to be allopathic drugs. It's got to be this focus on superfoods and all forms of things that are basically constantly advertised to make people better and better. Uh, we need to take one step back and understand that in, uh, the human body is intelligent. It's got this brilliance, this mechanism, this innate intelligence to do the things that most of us are trying to do in factories. We're trying to do it through pharmaceutical drugs. We're trying to make people believe that one particular superfood can solve all of your health problems and all of that stuff. Rather than taking a step back and understanding the anatomy of the human body, how it works, trying to figure out how the intelligence of the human body keeps us alive every day, handles certain viruses, bacteria, and all of these things. That's what we need to start doing. Now, over the last couple of months and uh, weeks and months, I've been stressing on the importance of sleep. That is the foundation of the human body. If we give our body the right quality and the quantity of sleep, we initiate that intelligence to protect us, to detoxify us, to reduce inflammation, to do everything that we're searching for outside of us. We think that a sing single pill is gonna take away inflammation. You Google turmeric, it says anti-inflammatory, so all of a sudden we're all eating turmeric, thinking our inflammation will go. Well, yes, it is true, it is an anti-inflammatory food, but alone, it's not gonna do your job. The basic foundation is sleep. What we're gonna to learn today is something called the glymphatic system. Most of us have heard of the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is our body's garbage disposal system. Okay, it removes toxins, it removes excess blood fluids from our cells and moves it out of our system in the form of lymph. So if our lymphatic systems don't work the right way, we basically block our lymph nodes and you can think of it like a little drain in the toilet. If the drain is clogged, basically everything rises to the top of it and it overflows. You clean the drain and it drains out automatically. Now these lymph nodes, they're basically gateways of toxins. If they get blocked, then we start having more problems with our lymph system. We have swollen lymphs, we have lymphatic cancers, we have all kinds of inflammation because the body drainage, the sewage system of the human body isn't working anymore. Well, we're not talking about the lymphatic system today. That works for the human body. Now, what about the brain? Because the brain is constantly producing metabolic waste all the time. With the overthinking that we do, the stress that we have, the overload of information and everything that we do, we're producing more and more overload, which is why sometimes we feel mentally fatigued. Why do we feel mentally fatigued? Why do we feel emotionally drained? That is when your brain is trying to tell you, hey, there's an overload. So like the body, we have the lungs to detoxify. We got the liver, we got the kidney, we got the skin and we got the colon to help us detoxify. The brain doesn't have any of these things. The brain has something called the glymphatic system. Now, let's understand how important it is for the glymphatic system to work. How does the glymphatic system work? Only when we are in a deep state of rest, which is sleep. The glymphatic system in the human, in the human brain shrinks to almost 60%, creating space between the cells. And then your brain is able to generate cerebrospinal fluid, which basically acts as the detox agent, washing away the toxicity between these brain cells, all the unnecessary protein. So we talk about the beta amyloids. These are found in Alzheimer's patients. That's how you determine Alzheimer's by measuring the count of the beta amyloid. It's a kind of protein that gets between the cells, interrupting function, leading to memory loss, loss of control of your movements, slurring of your words, and all of these things, because the cells are unable to clean themselves up. So when there's toxins in the human body, we have illness, toxins in the liver, our enzymes go all over the place, in the kidney, the colon, we have constipation, we have estrogen dominance, the brain. So when you are in a deep state of rest, your, your lymphatic system shrinks to allow the cerebrospinal fluid to come in and do its cleaning job. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. And both of these are interconnected with each other with other CNS tissues that connect to your lymphatic system. So when the brain shrinks, the toxins get basically flushed out down the connective tissues into your lymphatic system and out of your body. This is the importance of sleep. Now you can take brain tonics, you can take omega-3 for your brain, you can put yourself into ketosis so that you have more energy in your brain, that's all fine. 
but unless your brain is using its natural defense mechanism of the glymphatic system to clean itself out, we, we start increasing the overload in the brain. And that's how we start aging faster. That's how young people today are forgetting things quickly. Their memories falling. Yes, it could be because of low B12, omegas and everything else, but we all know that our alertness levels decrease when we even have one night of sleep deprivation. That's why we get more irritable the next day, the more frustrated. Small problems create bigger issues for us. They're more magnified because we've not been able to detoxify the brain. Now, very important to understand is also the more thinking and the more brain that we use. So some people who have desk jobs, lawyers, doctors, whoever it is, a businessman who's constantly thinking needs more sleep because the more you're thinking, the more metabolic garbage you're producing in your brain. And that has to be taken out of your system. Otherwise, remember the drain. It gets more and more clogged and then you have an overflow of toxins on your bathroom floor. The same thing with your brain. Now you can do all the detoxes. I'm waiting for the next person to invent a brain detox that promises that there are foods that will detoxify your brains. They don't exist. Sleep is naturally built into human beings, animals, organisms as a mechanism to protect us. Now, each of we have cells which are called the glial cells in the human in the human brain. The functions of these are to protect the neurons, to insulate the neurons, and to basically nourish the neurons. So these glial cells also contribute towards the immunity of your brain and your entire human body. Immunity is not just moringa, pumpkin seeds, and walnuts and exercise. It is everything, your brain function and your body. You see, you cannot separate the mind from the human body. It is interconnected. What happens in the human brain will happen in the body. Your brain is of good health. It will translate to your physical self and, life and vice versa. So these glial cells need to be nourished, protected, and insulate your neurons. They relax and detoxify when you are asleep when your lymphatic system works. Because remember, we do not have lymphatic vessels in the brain. It is only the lymphatic system. So they shrink and do the job. That can only happen when you sleep, continuous sleep, not two hours in the night and then two hours in the afternoon and you think you're hitting your seven to eight hours. No, you cannot break the cycle of nature, period. Now, what else impacts this lymphatic system? People with chronic high blood pressure, because high blood pressure also weakens the arteries basically that supply blood to the brain, stiffening them, sending less blood to them. That's why people with high blood pressure also experience the throbbing in their brain, the throbbing in their head, fatigue levels, people with diabetes, unstable sugar levels, chronic diabetes, which is why it's so important for people with diabetes to understand your doctor may have your, your sugar levels under control on a piece of paper called your medical report, but you still have a problem. You need to make lifestyle changes to manage your insulin, insensitivity prob, prob, uh, the right way, your sugar levels, fluctuation, and all of that requires your medicine from your doctor as well as you taking responsibility and making lifestyle changes. That's why people with di diabetes can complain of being lethargic, tired, fatigued all the time, and then they start eating more food, thinking more energy from food will make them well. But all you needed to do was detoxify the brain function. So, so high blood pressure, diabetes, all of these impact, impact your brain function. So what is the solution for this? Are there any foods to make your lymphatic system work? Absolutely not. Number one is reducing the load from your brain. Do your work, use your brain as much as you need to. The brain is a powerful tool, very resilient, but give it the right amount of rest, recovery, nutrition that it needs. Meditate, take the load, stop your thoughts at some point. Don't stop them literally, you can't do that. But that's why silence, playing a game, listening to music, de-stressing so you take the load off your brain. The more load, the more metabolic toxins in the human brain. Coupled with lack of sleep, you have a big problem. So these are the simplest things. How much of money does it cost you to sleep? How much of effort does it take you to sleep or improve your sleep hygiene? The only thing coming in between you and improving your cycles of sleep is your own lifestyle. Now you need to choose which is more important and what you do. It doesn't mean that people who sleep on time or get quality sleep don't have fun lives, don't have social lives, don't have the benefits of everyone else who compromise their sleep to do everything in life. A lot of people, a lot of videos will tell you, oh, you need to work hard, sleep is not important, build your careers. But most of these people have money in their bank, but 
most of their money gets spent on their health problems that they have today. Teach your children and yourselves the definition of success is build what you want, your empires, your dreams, study well, make your well, do whatever you want, but not while compensating your health. Because no matter how much of wealth you have in that bank account of yours, once you lose your health and you get into that suffering, yeah, that money and that wealth cannot buy you back your happiness or take away that pain that you've reached that level to bringing it on. So please understand that our definitions of success is completely distorted. We build our definitions of success according to famous people that we see, our role models and all of that stuff. You know only a little bit about their life that social media projects. You don't know the whole other part that's going on behind that social media and news channels are not interested on focusing on. So we need to understand that you define success, have it all, but keep your, your sleep, keep your health as a priority. Successful are the people who can maintain, get everything they want and have great health at the end of the day. So sleep will take care of the detoxification of your brain, along with the right nutrition, the right amount of emotional detoxification and everything else. Next question is how do you sleep? We're gonna post the videos that we've done on that. If you're stressed, you can't sleep. So you see sleep and stress work together. Sleep more, children, growth in children. Foolish are the parents who compromise their children's sleep in order, them to, in order for them to achieve extracurricular activities and stuff like that. Foolish is the word because no amount of tennis skills and swimming and all of that stuff will reverse the damage of a sleep deprived body of a child, a young girl, a boy who is in their growth phase. And then we wonder why they get PCOD, why they're not growing tall, why they're obese, why they have juvenile diabetes, why they have ADHD and concentration problems at school. Keep it simple, keep it real. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.